Um, yeah, James Bromberger, who already yesterday talked about how AWS can help Debian, will now talk about Debian on AWS. S and yeah, thanks. Thank you. Cool. So um, firstly, this uh, is the BOF session. So that's why I said everyone come forward um, and we'll try and just discuss. Because basically so far, um, I've obviously grabbed Ingus' script and we've been generating AMIs and we've been keeping it as base. But there's been a, a couple of ideas that have come up. Um, a few of these we've discussed on the mailing list, uh, on the Debian cloud list. Um, but it'd be great to get some feedback in the room and some ideas back in the room. Because um, we don't have an official cloud team on Debian. It's kind of this, we are the cloud team. Thank you. You've come along. Um, you're in the group. So I, I had a bit of an agenda that I wanted to go through. Um, a quick summary of the current status of the AMIs on, on AWS. And obviously, my talk now, I'm actually talking as a Debian developer, not as an AWS person. I'm completely above the hypervisor here. Um, Lifecycle management of those AMIs. Uh, I deprecated a couple of the old um, squeeze, or the squ old squeeze uh, release 606 about uh, two, three weeks ago. Um, uh, the additions that we've got on there, obviously there's a base image right now, security, and then any other items that come up. Sound cool? General nodding? Cool. So um, current status. We have base Debian AMIs in all regions and including GovCloud. So I've managed to find someone who was uh, good enough and kind enough to sponsor us, taking that image into the uh, uh, ITAR-restricted uh, GovCloud environment. Obviously, I can't push that there myself. Um, I'm, I don't have access, not being a US citizen. And, and I guess, uh, uh, <laughs> Jimmy, would you like to push the AMI into? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's all politics. Um, uh, it only contains Debian main packages plus the SS, SSH root resize, user data, uh, execute scripts, and the root file system. Uh, well, yeah, I said that. Um, but no cloud init. So we all know this issue right now. Um, and we have that question around whether cloud init should be pulled in from backports. And if we do that, whether or not that means we should have backports in app sources or app sources list D um, by default. Um, we're configured for http.debian.net. We're not doing a full back to cloudfront.debian.net, but http.debian.net for most regions is actually pointing at CloudFront. So it's a zero sum game. And if we as Debian want to ever not use CloudFront for um, the CDN to, to access packages, then we obviously can change that um, outside of AWS. Um, we also don't have any of the software development kits. So the libraries, the Bo oh, the, although Boto is in there, it's a, an, uh, well, actually it's reasonably up to date, I think, as somebody looked today. Um, but we've now also got SDKs for Node.js, for um, uh, Java for um, Ruby, I think. Uh, there's about six or seven SDKs that are, are available. And I think Boto may be one of the few ones that are on there. There's some older Perl libraries on there, um, some older client tools. In fact, um, uh, S3CMD, uh, I think, might have a bug in it that I was uh, uh, persisting to the maintainer saying, we need this sort of three-line patch applied because it, it's going to be an issue. Um, and so we've got a bunch of questions as to, to what should actually be in them. Um, so let's go through that. What do you guys think about um, CloudNet? How are we going to handle that? I think you should install it. Microphone not working. I think you should. I think you should install it. Does that one work either? That one doesn't work. But either. if we install it, then we obviously need to maintain it, and we need to make sure that it's correct for any security problems that yeah. happen. As long as it's in backports. In backports? It is, since a yes. few days ago. So should we package pin it to backports? So you it's the only... You don't need to pin it, you just need to install it, and as long as it's installed, it's going to be upgraded automatically if, it's if you have the app source list. What if there's anything else in backports that supersedes what's in main? It's not a problem, I don't think It's so. not a problem. No? no. It, will only, um, it will only upgrade packages that are already installed. Okay. Or so if installed from backports. From backports yeah. specifically. Yeah. Cool. So what do we need for that? Just uh, an app sources line, and then um, in the uh, install script, we just install back uh, cloud init. Do we still consider that to be a Debian image? It is. Backports is official. Backports is official now. Uh, yeah. Does everyone else agree with that? Yes, of course. Yeah. Cool. So we could do that for the next build that we do of the images. Um, that actually solves a, a whole bunch of things and, and brings us a little bit more uniform. Um, and uh, would you guys do the same thing? Maybe. If I need to put it to Google Compute, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What, uh, why do you, could you guys 
switch to Cloudinate at some point? What's the what's the blockers for Google Compute? Uh, right now there are there where Google's hello. Right now Google Compute is not willing to or Google is not willing to sign the 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 the, the license agreement that you need to sign to submit code to a Canonical to include in Cloudinate. So we would have to have a special. We would either have to change that agreement that we have to sign, or submit the code in some other way, or or for for Debian. So uh, yeah, we're working on getting code out there. Whether or not Canonical takes it, though. And I think the main question is whether Debian would be okay with having a cloud in it that has code in it that's not in the upstream cloud in it, and that might be okay. I should also clarify: we'd be ha very happy for them to take the code, but. Uh, I mean, the default license would, of course, be their default license of GPLv3. We're happy for them to take the code. Packages can obviously take patches and, and be applied, so dpatch on, yeah. on package create. So I that's one option. Th this is, yeah, maybe the right, th right next step for us is to take our, like, get some changes out for Cloud Init to make it support Google Compute, put it into Debian, and then worry about the canonical problem later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, SDKs, client tools, etc. Um, now this becomes uh, a, an interesting one. That obviously the SDKs from all cloud providers um, are updated pretty regularly. Um, new features happen, and a lot of users want those features. And I think we were talking earlier about things like um, uh, being able to write to object storage and stuff like that. Um, we have a lot of Amazon tools already available. So I, I mentioned S3 CMD, Boto is already there. Um, but do we want to be adding in additional stuff from uh, a vendor repository into the Debian cloud images? My thoughts are potential, um, but then it would be significantly different from Debian because it's got vendor PPA, for want of a better expression, um, of a, uh, in that base image. Not all, obviously, not all instances that start on the cloud need these tools. But the fact that they're installed and not used might not be an issue. What do people here think? So, um, The, uh, well, personally, I'm happy with the images as they are, but there are tools like, for example, um, Glacier uh, SDKs to talk to Amazon's um, cold storage. Uh, that's not available in, in, uh, in any of our AMIs right now, but do we want that? And this is the same question you guys have got yeah, with Jess. I, I would YouTube. argue that your customers are probably crying for it, whether, like, whether they say so or not. But there's, there's, there's two, two options, though. Do we put it into the base image, or do we make it trivial for them to bootstrap to get to that point that it's available. Will, will you put that in Debian main? Yes. These tools? That, well, that I would like and to. And then do it in main, upload it to seed, and then after 10 days, upload it to backports, and then problem solved. Yeah. So w are we, I, I, I like backports idea. Do we channel everything through backports? Yeah. My understanding is that's the only way to get the, the, the update rate, which we probably yes. want. I don't know if everybody else concurs, but my, uh, my impression from the process is that th if you want to upgrade your, tool upgrade your tools every couple of months with new features and functionality, you have to go to backports. Well, uh, these tools I think we should have in main standard anyway, because I, I, you know, these SDKs are, are, are useful for me sure, from my laptop. But they would be old. Yes, they would be old. Um, I mean, none of us are going to deprecate our APIs at a rate that, that the, uh, the tools that were packaged you know, three years ago are going to stop working and not be useful to some degree. It might not have the latest, greatest thing that, that customers are going, ooh, nice shiny toy, we want that. Um, okay. Cool. Um, cu it's current set of AMIs. So we currently have uh, EBS AMI, 64-bit and 32-bit power virtualization, um, and we're going to add S3 uh, AMIs as well. Um, I started working on that about two weeks ago. I hit something and, and um, didn't manage to get back to it. A um, couple of interesting questions here. Should we drop 32-bit? We have multi-arch. Yeah, 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 Dave. Can we go back just one second? Back one? That um, was one second. Think you like? Yes. <laughs> Very good. Um, I'll be here all week. This, I apologize because this sort of bre breaches into some of the stuff that we were talking about Please, no. earlier, which was like, how do, can we copy things? Like, it was the GCU till problem. Can we copy code from other packages and put it into our package? Is that more acceptable in backports than it would be a main? No. 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 Yeah, but but newer versions of packages are, by definition, of backports more acceptable. Yeah. Mm. As mm. long as you make sure that when you have backports included, 
things are relatively coherent and uh, working if you include backports and uh, and uh, you pay attention to security fixes because yes. the security team doesn't, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. So th back to the 32-bit question. We have multi-arch support uh, in Wheezy. Um, is that good enough that we don't need 32-bit images? Someone has an opinion. Come on. For many workload, 64-bit uh, is all right. Though if you run Perl or PHP, the problem is that it takes twice the amount of memory. Yeah. So for some PHP users, 32-bit may make sense. Though uh, we have also coming soon uh, the X32 architecture, which will be a partial architecture mm. that might solve the problem. So you we would run in 64 bits together with some 32 bits user land, yeah. which still has the eight registers and whatever in, in this. Uh, so that's a Jesse era bits. problem? So it's going to happen, but like when Jesse is going to be released, not before. Perfect. And in so what I would do if, if I were you would be keeping 32 bits for Debian until we have Jesse and the X32 partial architecture. Sounds sensible, everyone agree? There is no guarantee that there will be X32 in Jesse. Yeah, yeah, but if it happens. If it happens, yeah. Okay. Um, next one. Uh, so EBS HVM images, so hardware virtualization. Um, now, if you saw my talk yesterday, uh, the API for registering images from a block device got updated so that now you can actually register HVM images. Uh, no. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> There's a man who had an NDA. Um, so, uh, no, this is now going to be open and, and available to be uh, called from tools. Now, Eucalyptus, obviously, you know, in the last uh, 11 days, hasn't implemented that yet. Uh, even the AWS um, EC2 tools haven't implemented that uh, parameter yet as well. Obviously, they w all of these will um, in the goodness of time. Um, but it does mean that we'll be able to actually get our Debian AMIs up onto the larger instance sizes, uh, for example, the cluster compute instances and the um, uh, uh, graphics instances, the cluster graphics instances with the NVIDIA Tesla cards and whatever else happens in the future with that family. Um, so I'm thinking that this is a yes. Um, but then the question also becomes, should we do that for S3-backed HVM in 32 and 64-bit times nine regions? So I, I have a question. With if, if you do drop 32-bit and if you, do, um, like if you do, don't keep every single one of these other permutations, mm. um, are they all going to be possible for a user who is so motivated to uh, continue to create such an image with our method on and run it on your cloud because if so, then if we handle most of the cases and make it clear how to do the official equivalent yeah. thing with uh, their use case in a different permutation, yeah. that seems great. For example, in Google's cloud, we only ship 64-bit images right now, but I believe Bill Davian Cloud support, I haven't tested it so much, but the support ought to work for 32-bit, uh, I'm not sure about kernel stuff, but we're gonna allow arbitrary kernel soon anyway, so. Yeah. So I, I, I think the script should about. support it. So, like, all of these things are going to su be supported I at the infrastructure level so yeah. that somebody could still build it even if the community here drops it. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think the, the, the build script that, that Anders has got um, should do all of the permutations that we want. Um, please, write patches. Put them in. If there's, if there's a permutation that you feel is, is that you're passionate about, um, you know, ch chat up on the mailing list and we'll talk about how we can do it. Um, I obviously have created a, a, an AWS account specifically for us as, as the Debian group to, to work in. So I'll give you access to that and you can test all of these images and, and, and do anything you want. Um, so if you'd like to work on any of this, let me know. Okay, um, lifecycle management. Oh, sorry, I should ask any other points of, of the, the current um, images that we're generating? I'd like to automate some of it because at the moment, um, the way I'm doing it is uh, I I have a, uh, a user data script, which I've put into an instance, and I put a spot bit in, um, and an instance starts up, <laughs> and it installs uh, uh, the script from GitHub. It installs Git, obviously, um, and then uh, from GitHub it gets the script, runs the script, and then it terminates itself when it, so you know, basically the spot bit is around for about five minutes, and I do that times eight regions, and they're all built independently locally. Um, 
And uh, yeah, that's. But I need to sort of do that next step and automate that as well. Anything else we want to do with the the current permutations? No. Okay. Um, so lifecycle management, uh, and and hopefully you guys will have uh, something on this. So um, six oh six, I got rid of uh, what two weeks ago or so. I gave notice about the beginning of July, so I gave about three weeks notice. I think I'd even spoken about it earlier in a, an earlier post in the Debian Cloud mailing list. Um, AMIs generally, from most vendors, change over time. Um, a security roll-up means a new AMI, which means a new AMI ID. And the reason this is important is, as we were talking earlier beforehand, um, if it's uh, embedded into an auto-scale configuration or a cloud formation template um, and the AMI is no longer available, then obviously you need to do some maintenance to keep that going in the current way that the cloud formation works. Um, I feel that we should keep 607. I don't think there's any reason to get rid of 607 um, because you never know in... in three, four, five years' time, you might come back and say, I need to go back to a, a, a squeeze image. Um, does everyone feel the same, that we should keep these old ones? Yeah? So the, then the next question becomes 7.0. There's to be uh, oh. other point release. Uh, typically, at the end of the life cycle of an old stable, uh, the release team does a point release. Yes. So eventually, your 6.0.7 will get uh, deprecated. From security, yes. But what if you wanted to start one up? You're desperate to find an AMI or an image to start up 607 in a couple of years' time. Given, yes, you know you're not going to get any security updates. Yes, but then why would you want 607 and not 609? Nine? Yeah, so the, the, the ultimate one, whether it's 8, 9, 10, whatever comes up, we should keep updating to that at that point. Yes, over there. You should move the sources to archive.debian.org to be able to still keep update installing packages from the older release, but yeah, you can keep it forever. That's, a, that's an interesting question, though, because obviously when the image is generated, the sources list talks to the current archive. Um, the, I guess maybe then does, do we need to separate our archive from, from the main distribution over time? We've done, why have we done so up to now? To conserve space, to reduce mirror space for our, our kind mirrors that, that take copies? Um, yeah. If SSH key is enabled, here we go, microphone coming. Le voila. Hello. Um, since SSHD is enabled by default on image, right? How sensible is it to keep an image which is likely to get insecure just a few months after it's deprecated by Debian? Sorry, could you say that once more time? How lucky is it? to have an image which is insecure a few months after Debian stopped providing security updates? Well, it depends on how you're launching it. If you're launching it within a virtual private cloud where there's no public access to that image, then it's a resource for you to use. Would you want a 607 publicly facing right now? Well, right now it's probably OK. But in four years' time, you probably don't want it publicly facing, but you do still want it launchable inside a virtual private cloud or with a security group that's completely closed because you've got something that you need to do to that image. So th do you have some way to enforce that? No. Um, uh, you, you have complete control over whether you make it public facing or not. I think what we should do is we should advise, you know, yes, big flashy lights. Um, this is an old release. Uh, you should obviously, you know, launch this in a secure manner. Uh, I would be against uh, forcing uh, some security yes. on, on uh, or some security restrictions on uh, all the unsupported images because I can perfectly imagine that uh, some security researcher for example wants to use this old image as a part of honeypot or yeah. par part of r r even research how many attacks are there on Absolutely just because we stop supporting um, yeah. you know, squeeze from from security updates doesn't mean people stop running on the internet so, so, so please don't put any restrictions on how yeah. can we run these old images. So we keep them verbatim as they are. Good. No, I agree with that. No, no restrictions. They can't hear you on the stream. Oh, that was it? Cool. Um, so uh, coming to the bottom, 7.1a. So for those that didn't see, obviously, we, we noticed um, when uh, just after, in fact, a couple of days after 7.1 came out, um, that we hadn't reinitialized the uh, ecliptic curve cryptography host key. 
which is new in 7. Um, with OpenSSH 6, was that, or newer? Anyone familiar? Um, and so we generated a whole heap of new uh, AMIs, and I just went for, oh, it needs a new number. We need this out there quickly. Let's make it 7.1a. Um, and obviously, that'll become 7.2 when we do the next point release of, of uh, Wheezy. Um, I got rid of the original 7.1, because the time frame between the two was you know, three days, four days. Um, I obviously gave it, what, two weeks or so of notice before I did that. Um, but I haven't got rid of 7.0. Should we? Now, following, following, <laughs> sorry? Should web. Yes, without the B. Uh, so let me, let me take, uh, that. should we? Um, now, it's, it's, are we, from the rule we had here where we said we'd keep the last point release of old stable, should we also keep the last point release of current stable with some window as we migrate through? So sh is 7.0 now useless? Yeah? General consensus? Uh, is it confusing to the customers? Yeah, it, it seems to me that I would be, if I was trying to figure out which of these I want, I mean, 7 and 6, I can kind of wrap my Absolutely. head Absolutely. But... Having both I of these? I have to be a Debian insider to figure out the difference between 7.1 and 7.0. I, th I think well, the I biggest number wins, but I think, I, I think getting rid of 7.0 would make it simpler because less choice is easier to make a choice. Yeah, as, as another data point from Google, we haven't figured out like a proper deprecation lifecycle for prior point releases of 6 and 7, mm. uh, but the... I mean, and the API surfaces, I think all of them right now, and, uh, and the... Um, web interface lets you, I think, choose all of them, but certainly default to, to the newest, and the command line gcutil only by default, unless you use certain flags, mm. uh, shows you the newest six and the newest seven yeah. only yeah. Uh, yeah, among Debian. So, so the two ways that we're distributing these AMIs through Marketplace and through our own Amazon Web Services account, um, the Marketplace has been updated to be this, 607, and 71A. That's all you can see. You can't see 7.0 anymore. However, we've still got 7.0 in our own account. Um, so what I'm proposing is we, we um, take that away from being marked as public, um, which is the same process I did for the others. I, I took away the public share so that nobody could actually launch them, and I waited for someone to scream. Nobody screamed. So uh, two weeks later, three weeks later, whatever, I removed those AMIs so they no, were no longer there. Um, because we will need to do management of this over time. There's a large amount of, of storage being taken up by all of these times eight, nine regions now. Um, and obviously more to come over time, um, that we're going to have to be able to manage this in some, some fashion. Especially if we do ever do some of the next points which are coming up, such as uh, other flavors of Debian that we might want to do, or blends, potentially. So general consensus was drop 7.0. Just, just one more check on that. Yeah, so cool. I have a small comment now. Please. If you want to keep 6.0 old. Last. Yeah, yeah final. Just because somebody may want to have a honey pot there, why you don't want to have 7.0 just if somebody wants to play with it? Good like question. Ecliptic comes. Yeah, yeah. I think the likelihood is that most people are going to be more interested in getting the final version. Because Honeypot isn't the only reason why you'd want to start up an old version. It might be that you have some software that you've found that you need to restore from a backup and you need to take it back to 2010. Um, so I think there's, there's more value in, in the ultimate uh, old stable versus Sounds random other point releases. Sounds convincing. Yeah? Cool. <laughs> uh, uh, one at the back, please. Specifically for 7.0. Yes. For the three, same reason you want to keep the 6.0, you may want to say we keep the 7.0 forever, forever, so some user can uh, get this one and maybe update the update uh, to 7.0. Let's say at some point we're 7.5, someone they wanna use the 7.0, update it to 7.2. Yes. And again, also, uh, you mentioned that some people may want to use uh, backup uh, and restore uh, an application. And uh, they're probably not going to want to backup this two weeks after uh, the deprecation is deprecated. It's probably going to, to be one year, and then they said, oh, damn it, we, we don't have that server uh, in-house anymore, we want and AWS to restore all data. And I see where you're coming from, but I, I also would counter that with um, the changes of, uh, from 7.0 to 7.1a being point releases. Um, 
the compatibility, I think, we generally keep there because, as we said just in the pre-discussion, is um, the only changes that are going in there are security fixes and not major features. Um, so I, I don't want to litter us with 20,000 AMIs that we're trying to manage. Um, but I do think that, that, that the most useful one is the pr ultimate point release from every, every release we had. So if we could go back to 5. Point, what was our last 5 release, anyone? 510? 510? 510? So 5.0.10 might be useful. Obviously, we'd need you know, support for the hypervisor in use here, um, which I don't know if we had a kernel then, even that did it. So there's interesting things if we wanted to do a historical project. And, and if people want to do a historical project, if someone here says they want to go and make a bow and a slink and a ham um, uh, back on here, obviously, you'd have to do some custom kernel stuff to try and get, get support in there. But that would be really interesting. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and in any case, if you need software from an older point release, you still have the snapshot that Debian.org yes. service yes. gives you every version out of every package ever. Mm -hmm. So you can still install from that if yeah. you really need it. 25 terabytes and growing. <laughs> cool. OK. Um, additions. So we've only got base images at the moment when we've put in 100% DFSG compatible software. Obviously, it's all done from the script. Everything is covered by the, uh, the, the licensing, which we're happy with. Um, we said we should pull in Cloud init from backports for base images. We've kind of ag agreed on that so far. Um, uh, should we have an image with Boto S3 tools and other S AWS SDKs? That's kind of repeating what I was talking about before. Um, uh, that's, that is repeating what I said before, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Moving on. Security. So here we talk about uh, ECC. Um, now, when the ECC stuff came out, I, it, was, it was 2 o'clock in the morning for me. I was uh, horizontal at the time. And when I woke up at 6, I saw that somebody had mailed um, the security team, which was great. Was anyone here who did that? No? It was great. The security team had been notified. And I went, right, OK, so I'll wait for their response. Uh, OK, this is taking this. I've had breakfast now. Um, hmm. I'll go and start generating these images, just in case somebody says, yes, do it. Uh, and so I generated the images. And they went, mm, it's getting up to sort of 11 AM now. I might just start to roll this because we need to get a fix out there. Um, so I don't know what our, our um, relationship should be with security, for Debian security, whether we should just roll a new release. And you're going to have the same question that comes up as well because we have one or two little extensions like this. Now, we obviously want to keep these issues to a minimum. Um, we've said all along we want minimum changes from a, a, a base install. Um, what else should we do? Are we happy with the fact we went to 7.1a? Do we want some other process in future? How are we going to handle this? And this is uh, Jimmy. I can see you're searching for a mic. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was going to say, like, although we didn't have that particular issue due to some of the weird Google Code implication that well, we learned. We, we, no. we had exactly the same. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> right here, right here, Dave. <laughs> yeah, you did, you did, but for seven point one Debian, we didn't because yeah, we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You spotted it. Probably it was. The, the, we, we failed yeah. to wipe the ECC. Right. The issue, mm. the issue clearly happened before I was involved with other images. So yes. But like even even with Debian images, we already had to do a kernel zero day security fix, or at least there's been a bulletin about this. It's not, you know. But mm. uh, but these issues definitely happen, and certainly Google was not immune to this kind of mistake either, you know. So. And and I think for things like kernel zero days, um, yeah. then we need to also push the security team um, and see if they're going to release a new package of the kernel into security updates and just pull that into a new sure. image. And again, in, in in this case, we're we're not yet using the Debian kernel, but we're going to have yeah. to be dealing with the Debian security team very soon because this will occur. You know? And and we want to keep these exceptions to a minimum, I think, because, right. yes, we should fix this once. Anyone go else got any other ideas or questions on security with regards to the images? I, I also mentioned earlier about deny host or fail to ban. Um, since we've got OpenSSH installed by default um, and open by default, um, obviously there's security groups around to restrict it at launch time. Should we have something like fail to ban or deny host or some other be solution? Be before that, just talking about the dates, Yeah. when we have a Debian point release and then just right after, we have a security problem that is getting fixed through the security repository. Then if you are going to re release a new image, that's not going to be the point release. Do you understand what yes, I mean? Yes, it's going to be an intermediate. Yes. So in that case, um, it will be point release plus that update. So I think it's very important that we notify our users of that and that we make sure that we all do the same work on all clouds at the same time. So that, that raises another thing, is that when our images boot, 
Um, they do not do apt get update. They do not get apt get upgrade minus dy for all pending security at the point of that launch. And the reason for that is because the instance, from my point of view, is the instance may be launching inside a, a, a network where it's got no access to any archives. Um, so A, it can't update, and B, it might not be vulnerable to it because it's running inside a, a, a walled garden, effectively. Um, also, we don't install uh, unattended updates by default. Do we feel we should have unattended updates installed? No, I'm getting a no so from there, yeah. So our, Go our the Google no? security team is very upset with us in general whenever we don't run unattended updates and whenever we don't do everything we can to lock down the machine. Yeah. And sometimes we fought back when we went to Debian from our previous operating system, we fought back a little bit and tried to say, hey, by the way, maybe Debian should be involved in figuring out what the default policy is. But I, w the more I hear you talk and the more I hear our security teams talk, I have a feeling that really the cloud's requirements here are just, it makes more sense to protect users from vulnerabilities and mm. so forth than to, then it, like, it makes sense to do something that the rest of Debian is doing even if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So like yeah, I feel that the standard for cloud Debian should be definitely different, right? We should be locking it down. We should have deny hosts. We had it in our previous image. We don't have it now in our Debian image. We should be disabling root login by default. Let users override it. Et cetera, et cetera. I, I saw you had a comment. Can we get the other microphone over there? No, you're okay. Someone else got an input on this. So I, I see that there are three parties at play here. There's the cloud vendor. Um, there is Debian and there is the user. Um, now, the, from Amazon's point of view, we, we say we operate a shared security environment that obviously everything that the uh, uh, hypervisor in the physical environment is done is taken care of by, by Amazon. Um, operating system patches are the responsibility of the end user. Um, I think what, what David, you're implying there is that how much does Debian want to do on behalf of the user to pre-secure that environment for them in that model? Um, but then that's not just a question for for cloud. That's also a question for Debian in general on every other piece of infrastructure we deploy on. Um, I just Potentially, we've just profiled the risk to be lower when it's running on a lab in your home behind your NAT. Thank you for the water, whoever put it there. Um, so, uh, other feelings? Anything else we should do? So we like deny hosts? No? I, I don't like to discuss policies because we, the cloud, have a specific need. I really think it should be more broad inside Debian. So where should we take it to? The discussion. Tech committee? Is that going too high, too big a hammer? If it's just installing a new package, that's yes. fine. If it's changing the behavior of a package or its default configuration, then I think you should deal with the current maintainer of the yes. package as much as possible. And I, I think it's just install a package. I think we're just saying which packages should be available there. Uh, then I'm fine with that. Yeah? OK. Cool. Excellent. Uh, yes, please. Good. The contents of deny host, who will uh, put it together. Whether it's uh, deny host. Sorry, the contents of deny host, uh -huh. yeah, who will put it together? The yes, package maintainer. It'll populate itself by... Uh, by um, whatever happens with regards to, to accesses to the, to the host. So there's no so customizations that required that I'm aware of, but... That includes a fail-to-ban construction. Effectively. That's what deny host does. F deny host and fail-to-ban are very similar. I will come from the time that uh, deny host was a static file. Uh, it d generates, doesn't it? Host is generated on uh, outlooks from basically if what, whatever is hitting SSH, and you know it's hitting too many times depending what configuration you've got for the night host. Okay. If it's hitting, I don't know, five times a second or whatever, twenty times, and it will fail fifteen of those for a period of time. It will yeah. put. Uh, IP into deny hosts and it will be banned from accessing it. Okay. Or, or is this an overreaction given that we're only doing SSH authentication with keys only? Thank you. So there's, there's you know, a trade-off there. Okay. Um, other ideas. Here's the general stuff. What else are we not currently doing for the AMIs on Debian that we should do? Yes. <laughs> Come on, Thomas. Give it to us. We are only publishing it on Amazon. Right. We're... 
we need a place where we publish all our Debian clouds without uh, request uh, the need of having a credit card registered on whatever provider. I could not test the AMI because I don't have an Amazon cloud account. Right. Um, you're welcome to have a uh, login onto the Amazon shared account. I don't want one. We don't want one. <laughs> I w okay. Well, I still I'm thank I'm you for coming. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I would like to test my image, yes. so I would like an account, but that's a different uh, thing. But I think everybody should be able to download it, and I think that these cloud images should be uh, on the Debian repository okay. if they are, if we consider them official. Yeah. So I did start with the first one. I very first started doing this. I dumped and and gzipped from the snapshot into an S3 bucket, so it was publicly downloadable. Um, but that was all manual steps, and I didn't get it scripted. That, um, may, that may end up being more than you want. The I mean, maybe you only want the latest version of any of these things. But like, I don't know. We keep the latest every single version we that's ever been published. We have kind of available. We deprecate them and stuff, but they're still there. Um, it's gigabytes upon gigabytes upon gigabytes of <laughs> images. Mm. I'm sure. I don't know if you want that on the public repository. Well, so the for the Debian images, by the way, I don't think we like we should actually publicize this via the Debian wiki. But like all of the ones that since since the official launch that we have uh, officially published to the Debian Cloud project, I've actually sh shared publicly in a Google Cloud Storage bucket. And when I mean publicly, I mean you could just browse to it via HTTP. Yeah. Uh, with no uh, accounts of. Is that not good enough? And it could also be put in the Debian so servers if they want. I mean, it's uh, there's there's they're all freely licensed. It's uh. It's um, they're just tarballs. The the Google, I'm sorry, but the Debian, the Google infrastructure is not the Debian infrastructure. It has to be on the Debian infrastructure, to my point of view. I, I don't mind that. But is it of any use there? The, the <laughs> our our images are basically tarballs of raw disk images, mm. so sure. Yeah. So yeah. That's what they are. DD touches it. We we currently upload all of our images to Google Cloud Storage. Um, I don't know if it makes sense, but we can easily give you guys those URLs. We can. He wants them hosted on Debian I infrastructure I as well. Yeah. Which, but they can go to both places. That's Absolutely. Fine. What, I'm, what, I, what I'm saying is, like, I don't know if I want to decide the policy of what gets stored on Debian servers, but De yes, yeah, they can policy. copy. Yeah. We can make it so that they can copy whatever of those files that they want. And or push them. Be because I want. Yeah. I, I also would love to have those images created at the same time as the Debian CDs, mm. uh, which is why I, I think it would be best to have everything built f out of the Debian archive without access to provider, because that way we can give the scripts to, let's say, uh, Steve McIntyre, if he's still uh, doing the CDs, and then he will create the cloud images, and they will be released at the same second when we r do a pan release. Yeah, the only, the only concern there is nothing about doing it within Debian. Doing it within Debian is good, and uh, our images do not have to be built on the cloud. We're not doing that even. But uh, uh, we release more often than the corresponding Debian stable release because of various fixes like we've been discussing. Mm. Uh, so it's actually reasonable to release a new image when a Debian point release goes out, but it's not going to be only then. But I think it's great. I think it's a fine idea to, uh, when, the, when the build happens, upload it to both Debian and Google Cloud Storage. The second one is required for the adding it, but it can go to both places for sure. Okay. But my point was not that you guys at Google upload it. My point is to automate it yeah. within yeah. the process. You can do that. It's just, it's just not just a CD release. It's more frequent. That's all. Yeah, mm. Tell us where, where in SQL your credentials are going to be used. Like for the you have to get to yeah. yeah. Cool. We have five minutes left. Any more questions? Any more suggestions? Any, anything at all? No, okay, I'll, I'll throw it open to any questions about Amazon or, or anything at all, as opposed to just the AMIs that we've been doing and the rest of the stuff. Anybody got any questions they want to ask? No? Cool. Yes. Are they, are they in a package in Maine? So the, no, this, this is actually a really good thing. Um, the tools... <laughs> The tools, I think, are universally useful. That they should be installable on, on no matter which platform. Because just because an instance is running on Amazon, it might want to talk to Google Storage, and vice versa. Uh, one of your in images running on Google Compute might want to talk to S3. Um, specifically, we might want to take the images 
and the AMIs that we've all generated and throw them onto the storage on each other's clouds. And that might alleviate the question of, well, it's not on Debian's infrastructure. No, but it's on multiple cloud providers, and we've, we've covered the, the infrastructure that way. Yeah. Yeah. See? <laughs> Got you thinking. No? Yes. So I've got uh, the more general uh, idea about generating those images regardless whether they are on uh, Debian infrastructure or uh, Google, uh, Google or Amazon infrastructure. So are we intending to, as soon as we have CDs, we, we want also to have images and yeah. possibly many, uh, many formats like AMI, RAW, uh, disk, uh, whatever else Google accepts, whatever else I don't know? Yeah, I think so. If there's a release, then we want it on, on all of the platforms as quickly as possible. Then one of the other questions is, at the moment, we haven't generated any Jesse images. <coughs> should we start doing that? And at what frequency should we start doing that? Uh, and, and I had um, Steve come and ask me uh, yesterday, um, how about getting a cloud image that uses um, uh, System D? Um, how about we test? Yeah. How about we, yeah. How about we test both of them and have cloud images for both? I mean, do we want to use that as a platform yeah, on, on any of the vendors, but obviously do we want to generate AMIs which do this that we can then open up for people to test? You have nightly builds for, for DI, why not have nightly Yeah, <coughs> we could do. You, uh, you like that idea, Thomas, yeah? Yeah, I agree, we should. Should do that, yeah? We should have time to do it. <laughs> well, no, no, we just need to script it. We script it, it'll happen. Yeah, yeah. But obviously uh, I, I, I would suggest we probably don't push nightly builds through the marketplace because that's going to confuse our uh, um, new users quite a lot. Wow, I've got Debian 7.1, 2013, 08, 13, 12, 52, 06, point something. Um, cool. So yeah, I think we should start to get some Jesse images happening around the place, because obviously that's somewhere where we can uh, uh, fight some bugs and, and fix stuff up, obviously, for the next release. Any other questions? No. In which case, please do me a favor and take a T-shirt or more. Um, there are two boxes here of T-shirts. There is another box of triple extra large in the next room, only because I couldn't carry it in here in the time that I had beforehand. Um, I don't want to take them back to Australia. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your input. Um, please subscribe to the Debian Cloud mailing list. Your opinions are of huge value to Amazon, to Google, to all of our, us. Um, and obviously, we want to make Debian to be as successful as possible for all of our users, no matter how we categorize them. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, James.